This here is what we're going to create today, and believe it or not, there's not a single line of code in the creation of this 3D scene. That's right, we're going to use an app called Spline3D, which is a UI for creating and animating 3D environments, which uses 3JS under the hood. So go ahead and create an account at spline.design, and let's get started. If you enjoyed this video, check out designcourse.com where you can learn UI, UX, CSS, and more with my custom interactive platform that makes learning fun and easy. Alrighty, so let's go ahead, once you log into Spline, new file, and it's gonna give us some templates or some starting points really to get started essentially. We're gonna choose right here, studio lighting. All right, and I like it because it just has a good lighting setup. It actually has a backdrop uh, as you can see right here. And just some keyboard shortcuts real quickly for movement. Um, hold Alt uh, or Option on Mac and left click and drag just to look around. You can also hit the spacebar key, hold that down, left click and drag to pan. And then of course your mouse scroll wheel will zoom in and out. Now we're gonna go ahead and just delete these two starting shapes right here. And what we'll do down here, if you can see where it spe specifies orthographic or perspective, uh, we're gonna stick with perspective, but we're gonna click on this top one and that will make it so that we're on an aerial view looking down at that backdrop floor. Now I'm gonna hold my space bar just to push myself out here. We can kind of see the grid slightly. Um, and we're gonna come up here where it says plus to create a new object and we're gonna choose path. All right, so when we choose path, you can see it kind of highlights everything in pink. That's just because there's currently a backdrop selection there. Don't worry about that. We're gonna left click once to create a, what we typically would call like an anchor point. So um, you can do bezier curves with this, as you can see, left click and drag, but we're not gonna do that. We're just going to create a, a five point, uh, kind of like a home icon, something super simplistic. So we're gonna left click once each time. And I'm gonna do the best I can to make it uh, as straight as possible. We can of course go in and adjust the position of these anchor points later. Um, and then we'll just kind of create our home shape. There you go, something simple like that. You know, we can go ahead then and um, if we wanna edit this, we hit escape, uh, we could double click and then we can make adjustments to these options uh, or to the vector points or the anchor points, whatever you wanna call them specifically. So this looks like a big goofy sort of, uh, oh boy, we're way up tall. Yep, don't worry about that. We'll just drag that sucker way down here and let's get this into place. There we go. So now we can just zoom up and I'm gonna make this bigger. So shift and just drag this up somewhere right around here. All right, so now what we wanna do is we'll make some adjustments here to the corner. We wanna smooth these things out. So I, if I drag this right here and I zoom up, we could see over here we have this corner option. If we increase that, it's gonna make it look a lot better, right around 100 or so based on my current size. You may have to adjust that to tinker with it. But I, th overall, this looks not nice and smooth now. I really like the look of it. Um, we're also gonna go ahead and just rotate it up slightly. I kinda like the look of that. Right now, it looks like a raft. <laughs> so anyhow, now what we wanna do is make some adjustments to the path extrusion section. So I, if I zoom up here, by default, we're at circle. We're gonna actually change this to rectangle. I, you can see it kinda gives us a diff, just a different look for that path extrusion. We can change it to polygon and adjust the slides. We could do all sorts of crazy stuff. We can make it a star. It's actually really cool. Um, we're just gonna stick with rectangle and we can see there's other options down here as well, um, such as depth. This is cool because the depth and offset play with each other. So uh, we can animate all these properties as well. So if we wanna create like this continual looping infinite animation, we can do that with the depth and offset parameters as well. Um, we're actually gonna go ahead and just leave that all the way like that to one. And we're also going to have, let's see here, uh, a difference in angle. So I kind of like this idea, right around 50 or so for the angle where it has this edge that's at the top. We're gonna use that to kind of create a cool sort of, I guess you could say kind of like a rail that this little ball is gonna follow around. Um, so that looks pretty good right there. I, we can also further adjust the size. So the X and Y from maybe, I. Uh, 100 to 50 on the X and Y, and I think that looks yeah, pretty good right there. 
Awesome, the final thing we wanna do is adjust the material right here. So for the material, we're gonna go ahead and specify for uh, the type, it's going to be a glass. All right, look at that. It already looks like just really cool and good out of the box already. Um, we can adjust the blur, I'm gonna say around 22. The thickness will be negative 570. Now, of course, I'm using these values because I tinkered around with them before. Um, and it just it interacts with the ball that we're gonna add pretty well. So I want, ha I want to have like reflections off of the ball because we're gonna make a nice little ball essentially right now. So I, what we'll do here is we're gonna zoom up and we're going to select the sphere right there. And we're gonna hold Shift and Alt, make a perfect ball. Yeah, right around there, that size looks pretty good. And we'll go ahead real quickly and we're going to adjust the color. So we're gonna take the color and we're gonna make it a gradient. I advise experimenting with all of these because there's some really cool effects that you can apply. Once we have the gradient specified, we can then click on the gradient and then we can choose type radial. And then I'm just gonna adjust the first color stop uh, to something like around here, kind of like a purple. And then the next one, we'll adjust this one more in a blue range, and it gives us a nice view. We can kind of increase this if we want, if we add more of the other eye, uh, and I think that looks pretty good. All right, so now that we have that, we're gonna go ahead and get this positioned on the path that we created, and we want it to animate along this path. So the way we do this, uh, and, 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 and what's really important for positioning purposes, let me just show you what'll happen. If I take this right now, and with that ball selected, I choose object, I uh, align to object path, it's gonna be in the middle of it. We don't want that, it just kinda looks strange. Uh, we could of course adjust the offset, and it'll just go all the way around, and that's how we animate it. But we want to position it above, so it's sitting on this little rail. So in order to do that, we're going to go ahead and take, uh, remove the path. Uh, so now it's no longer aligned to this path. We can move it around freely. We're gonna group it. So Control G, and now it's a group right here. Now this part's a little strange. The workflow is strange for what we wanna do here. Uh, but you first have to hit Control Alt and then left click on the group over here specifically, um, right here. And when you do that, it's gonna allow you to push this down. Now when we do that, we can now take align to object and choose path. There we go. It's now sitting on that edge. And if you have to play around with it, just you know, take this back off to none for align to path and then readjust by hitting control alt, left click on the group and then move that uh, offset or whatever it is, I forget what it's called, um, move it down. So. Now we're ready to rock because we could take this offset and we could just animate it. So the way we'll do this, uh, and by the way, we have two properties over here just to um, show you what's happening. We have slide, so you can change the starting point. This is essentially the starting point. And then the offset will just you know, go all the way around. Both of them at zero are fine. If it starts there, I have no problem with that. So now what we'll do is we're going to animate this. So taking this sphere, we can go ahead up here under states, click plus. So now we have a base state and just a new state. So the new state, we're going to adjust it so that this property down here, offset is one. All right, so now if I go back to the base state, it's showing that the offset is one to zero. That's what we want. Then we click events and then we click plus right here. And we want this to, to be basically on start whenever this loads up. We're gonna create a transition, and we're gonna go from the base state. This is the duration. So we'll do like maybe six seconds. We're gonna change the easing type from ease in and out to linear because otherwise the animation will slow down once it gets to the beginning. And then we're going to choose loop infinite because we want it to infinitely loop. All right, now if I go ahead and play this, it doesn't work. Oh, and the reason it's not working is because I was animating the wrong property. So if we click on base state, make sure both offset and slider are zero. And then if we click on state, 
make sure slide is one and offset is kept at zero. Uh, now with it being infinite, we can click play and look at that. It is ready to rock. Okay, so now let's go ahead and add a model uh, so we can have physics just to make it more interesting. So um, if you go to Google and you just type in free 3D whatever you want, like a beer bottle or something like that, this is gonna be for a fictional 404 page essentially where it says go home, you're drunk. So we're just gonna have a beer bottle. Um, we're not gonna actually import the material, so it's just gonna be the actual 3D object here just to stylize it, make it a little bit more interesting. Um, and so you can click a download to download this and it has an OBJ file. Now, once you have that on your desktop, we can then just click on import. We can click 3D model right here and I'm gonna type in Corona and we now have a Corona beer bottle object that we can use on our scene. So uh, we're gonna scale this down just a bit. All right, and we're going to rotate it perhaps. We're gonna get it up into Actually, before I rotate it, we'll just get it into this position, kind of get an idea of where it's sitting. We're going to rotate it up so that it's kind of sitting on or near. This area. All right, great. Something like that should work just fine. We can go ahead and change the material here uh, from color to tune. Kind of just makes it a little bit interesting so we can adjust the color and all this stuff I uh, yeah we'll leave it like that it's fine so now what we want to do is enable physics I uh, so we're gonna select outside here and or anywhere really um, and because this is currently locked we're going to come down here where it says physics we're gonna click yes all right then we're going to select our bottle and you want to make sure that it says right over here, uh, physics should be enabled, uh, but we're gonna change the body type to dynamic. So that part's real important. I'm also gonna adjust the weight here. You can experiment yourself to see what these specific values do. Just the weight and gravity scale to two, that'll affect how the animation occurs. Um, if we hit play, <laughs> you get some crazy results. If we hit this loop button right here, it could start, and you can kind of see just what it does. It'll repeat the same thing each time. So just making small adjustments to perhaps the angle uh, will affect the resulting animation. So I like that one actually quite a bit better. And so I think that's pretty cool. You can sit there and duplicate these and add some more if you want. Uh, but that is essentially it. Uh, as you can see, it doesn't take very long to create something that's really cool like this. I, I suggest just experimenting with all these different uh, parameters to create some really cool effects. So once you have what you like, say for instance, you like the animation, uh, you wanna go forward with this, get your, uh, your perspective set up like your camera, and then once you like that, hit export, and you have a few different options here. We have a public URL where you can kind of just like share your spline design. So you can just open this up and check it out on the web. You can also do a code export right here. You can click on viewer actually. Um, this is what I used. So the viewer is just a, a couple lines of HTML, the script right here. And it, give you, it gives you the ability to um, adjust play settings, like to include the logo or not, uh, to show a b background color. Essentially, it's tying all the stuff to 3JS. Uh, so uh, it's obviously very capable. Uh, there's a lot of different options here that you can tinker with on your own. But essentially, you take these elements, you copy those. And it, by the way, every time you make an update or an adjustment to your scene, you wanna click Update Viewer. Otherwise, it's not going to reflect on the web. So. Um, once you have this, you can just copy that, and I will show you real quickly the actual HTML that I created for this. So you can see it says div class h1, you know, paragraph go home. You're drunk, you're drunk rather. Go home. Blah blah blah. And here's those two lines I uh, specified right there. And then also my main.sass file. Uh, nothing's happening exciting here. You can kind of pause this if you wish and just look. I'm just kind of structuring things. Uh, as such. So now what I can do is just let me hide that. I uh, click go live and there you go. Check this out. So this is the one that I created initially. Here's a couple of uh, beer bottles 
And there you go. All right, everybody. Hopefully, you learned something new here. I Obviously, Spline is a very capable and powerful tool that they're continually updating uh, with new features. And of course, it is a GreenSock and 3JS under the hood. Uh, in fact, if we click the Wappalizer plugin, you could see there's a lot of stuff happening here. Now, you might be wondering, that's a lot of stuff just for this little sort of uh, example. However, you can, uh, in the context of a full project, utilize 3JS uh, and GreenSock in a lot of other areas of the website anyways. All right, so hopefully you found that useful, and I'll see you all soon. Goodbye.